Oh, man. So, man, you guys go over like you're over budget here, right? You're over the ARV. You're in you're, you're basically upside down on this thing with cash into it, not on your loan, yeah. but just all in. You have more cash. You're in an area that's probably, you know, considered risky. Why'd you come back for more? Like, what, what was, uh, I mean, most people say, all right, let's, let's get this thing moving. And I mean, you, I mean, the story goes, you go from six to 200 here. So like you obviously bought another one. Like what was the mindset after all was just said and done? Like, you know what? That was great. Let's do it again. When you ask it that way, I kind of scratch my own head. Um, I'm joking. Uh, the, the numbers ultimately made sense. And that's really what it comes down to in a lot of ways. You have to be diligent about the underwriting. You have to know exactly how much cushion you have and how much give you have and where you have it so that all the numbers still make sense. Whether that's for us, a big focus for us is just truly net cash flow. Um, you know, NOI is, is important or net, net operating income. However, because we're long term holders, cash is king for us. We want to make sure that we, once the project is done, the tenants have moved in, that we're kind of, so, so to speak, free and clear. And that the property sustains itself and has something left over. And whether that's for unanticipated capital projects, um, something breaks that, you know, is a little bit more significant. Um, And if not, then it allows for distributions, which we then plow into the rest of the business and and just continue uh, buying more properties. In D-class neighborhoods like this, in a property like this, I see a lot of people um, underwrite uh, too conservatively on the expenses. Where in the early on did you, was your pro forma off? Too conservatively or too risky? Too risky. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When you say, so you, you're thinking they, they assume they their expenses, the expenses are going to be lower? Yes, oh. yes, yes. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is a common mistake for these neighborhoods. Absolutely. Our turn, some of our turns are rough to, to say the least. Um, <laughs> I, uh, and I take a deep breath because I've walked into some of these units and I'm just like, I can't even believe that this is a state that someone would leave a unit in. Um, we've easily, there's been times where we, we've easily spent five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 on what in another neighborhood would be a basic turn wouldn't cost you more than 1500 bucks. Um, and it's just because things get so beat up, whether it's the flooring needs significant repairs, if not replacement, there's holes in the wall. Um, doors are, you know, ba- barely on their hinges anymore. Um, the bathroom vanity has just completely gone to crap, whatever it might be. It's just some of these turns can be very, very rough. And they just, again, it, it re- just requires that truly hands-on approach where if you want your units to be at the quality that you expect, um, it helps to have that in-house team and really keeping them, I guess, accountable to our standards. So turn Is over. there any other way to succeed in like the C to D neighborhood except to be that hands-on operator? Right. Like it, it's almost, it almost feels like the necessity that you have to take on maybe not everything, but much more in order for this to be successful. Like you just, you have to just take more accountability than you do in other neighborhoods. I, I, I agree. I think, I think it is hard. Um, to not have that in-house property management team in these neighborhoods just because of the level of commitment required. Of course, you can hire third-party management. And we've worked we've worked with other third-party management companies and we've been very happy. But those are in neighborhoods that are a little bit more stable than North London, um, where we know that um, it, it's less likely that there's going to be these crazy kind of one-off scenarios that can really turn turn somebody off from the neighborhood. Um, for us, it's, it's just, it's been important to have that boots on the ground. And that's where Marston comes into play. Marston's on site, uh, I would say at a minimum every other day, um, he's involved. The tenants know who he is. All the tenants know who he is for better or worse. Um, but it, it's important to kind of, in a way, show face, um, and at the unit count we're at, you're going to be traveling to a lot of these properties just naturally. It's not like he just hangs out you know, at a property for no reason at all. It's he's overseeing the maintenance guys. If there's a project that's taking place, that's a little bit bigger. Like for example, right now we're redoing a front facade at a building. So he's there a little bit more frequently to make sure everything's progressing according to plan. Um, That really is, is the key um, for us to be successful in this neighborhood is, is to just have that boots on the ground, both from construction and property management. We've been able to outsource other things, um, but construction and property management, those two pieces have been very difficult for us to let go of. Uh, 